Hello everyone and welcome to the Williams Tops TV community. I'm your host, and I'm excited to take you on a tour of the 10 strangest graves in the world. Each of these tombs is unique and has an intriguing story behind it that has captured the imagination of people around the world. So get ready to explore together and discover the mysteries behind these incredible tombs. Let's get started. Number 10, Betty Stephen. In Plymouth, a place located in Trinidad and Tobago, there is a unique tomb that has aroused speculation and curiosity about the history of its occupant, Betty Stephen. In the epitaph on the tomb, you can read the enigmatic phrase, a mother without knowing it, and a wife without her husband knowing it. These words have perplexed those who visit the place and have triggered various theories about the life of Betty Stephen. Betty Stevens is believed to have passed away in the year 1783 at the age of 23. The story surrounding her grave suggests that she may have been a slave who suffered a series of tragic experiences throughout her life. According to her speculations, when she was only 12 years old, Betty would have been a victim of rape by her master, which triggered an illness in her. Over the next 11 years, she Betty Stevens reportedly went through several episodes of unconsciousness, during which she was again abused. During these periods of unconsciousness, Betty would have given birth to four children, although she herself never knew it. Betty Stevens' story is just a guess, and there is no concrete evidence to support these events. Despite the lack of confirmation, this story fascinates tourists who visit Betty Stevens' grave in Plymouth. The mystery that surrounds her life and the inscriptions of her on her tomb have made her a popular tourist attraction in the area. Number 9. John Rennie John Rennie was a Welsh painter who died in 1832. Although his name and occupation might suggest a common life, his tomb has become a fascinating enigma to those who visit it. He has even inspired a song dedicated to his memory. What makes John Rennie's grave so remarkable is an engraving on it, which appears to be covered by coded text. This engraving is divided into 15 rows and 19 columns, each with a letter. To the naked eye, the letters appear to be arranged randomly, which has puzzled researchers and the curious who have tried to decipher their meaning. Despite the apparent randomness of the letters, some words, such as, here lies John, have been identified among the 46,000 possible combinations. However, no one has been able to fully understand the full message hidden in the engraving. The enigma has led to various theories about its intent and meaning. Some people speculate that the scrambled text could be a way to confuse the devil. In folklore, it is believed that writing enigmatically or reversing the words can prevent evil forces from interpreting or using the message against you. This theory suggests that John Rennie might have wanted to protect his eternal rest by using this encrypted text. Although there have been many efforts to decipher the message, no one has fully unraveled the enigma of John Rennie's grave. However, the mystery of it has attracted numerous visitors and puzzle enthusiasts who enjoy the challenge of trying to decipher the hidden message. Number 8. James Leeson Although James Leeson's name may not say much on its own, his grave has become famous due to the enigmas surrounding his tombstone, which involve hidden messages and possible connections to secret societies. James Leeson passed away at the age of 38 in the year 1794. The tombstone marking his resting place is adorned with various figures symbolizing the brevity of life and the importance of immortality. However, what really surprises those who observe it is a kind of coded message that is believed to correspond to a secret Masonic language. This encrypted message has generated great intrigue and has led to attempts to decipher its meaning. To some extent, part of the message, which supposedly reads, Remember Death, has been decoded. However, it is the set of codes, images, and strange drawings present on the tombstone that raises the biggest questions about who James Leeson really was and what message he wanted to convey after his death. The presence of Masonic symbols on James Leeson's tombstone has given rise to speculation about his possible affiliation with a secret society. Freemasonry, with its history and traditions shrouded in mystery, has intrigued people for centuries. Freemasons are believed to use coded language and symbols in their rituals and communications, which has led to the assumption that James Leeson may have been a Freemason and that the encrypted message from him on the tombstone is related to this affiliation. However, to this day, the identity and true intent of James Leeson remain largely unknown. 
His tombstone and his encrypted message continue to be the subject of debate and speculation by researchers, occult enthusiasts, and those interested in uncovering the secrets of secret societies. Number 7. Mary Ellis The peculiar thing about his grave is its location, which is in the middle of a car park. How is it possible that a grave was left in a random place that is not a cemetery? The story behind the grave of Mary Ellis explains it. In 1790, Mary Ellis moved to New Brunswick, Canada, to spend time with her family. During her stay, she met a Navy officer with whom she fell in love. They both thought of getting married and starting a life together, although before that he had to go back on board. He would be sailing for months but upon his return they would be married as planned. The officer left Mary Ellis her horse, which was one of her most precious assets. However, time passed, and the officer did not return. The girl used to ride the horse to go to the port of New Brunswick and find out where her lover was. The answer was always the same, nobody knew. As time passed, the officer did not return, but Mary Ellis did not give up. In 1813, she bought a farm very close to the port so that she could receive him when she returned. The farm was located along the Raritan River, which was navigable and a possible inlet for the officer's boat. Unfortunately, her Mary Ellis died a few years later without ever seeing the officer she was to marry arrive. Her family buried her near the river where she had waited so long. Over the years, the area evolved and many things were built, but Mary Ellis's grave was never touched or moved. Today, it still exists and is protected by a simple fence. It is located in the middle of a car park in a shopping center and has become a place of visit for tourists and travelers. Number 6. Florence Irene Ford Can you imagine a tomb with stairs and a window? Well, it exists, and it is in the city of Natchez, Mississippi. It is the grave of a little girl named Florence Irene Ford, who died of yellow fever in 1871. The girl was always very afraid of storms, and her mother calmed her down to ease her fears. After her death, her mother made special arrangements for her daughter's grave. The mother requested that instead of covering the grave with earth, stairs be built that descend to the girl's coffin. The coffin would be placed in an upright position and a window would be placed in the part where the girl's face was located. In this way, when descending the stairs, the mother would meet the face of her daughter through a mirror. The reason for this unusual grave was that the mother wanted access to her daughter during storms. Although the girl was deceased, the mother thought that her spirit would be afraid of thunder and lightning, and she could calm her down like she used to when she was alive. The tomb was equipped with a closable metal lid so that the mother could be at the bottom of the stairs reading or singing to her daughter until the storm passed. Today, the grave of Florence Irene Ford can be visited. However, for obvious reasons, the window facing the girl's face has been boarded up. At the bottom of the stairs, you can find all kinds of offerings that people leave in honor of the girl who passed away many years ago. Number 5. Okanoin Cemetery in this case, we have to talk more about a cemetery than a particular grave. This is a Buddhist site where the cemetery is not really intended to house the dead, but a place for the spirits to wait. The Okanoin Cemetery acts as a bridge between life and death according to Buddhists. In fact, many call this site the Okanoin Bridge. The people who die and are brought to the Okanoin graveyard wait for the spirit world to open up. It is located in Japan, and is located in an ancient forest that is over a thousand years old. Most of the bodies in this cemetery are ashes in their corresponding container. Everything is made of wood and stone and it is undoubtedly a site that leaves no one indifferent when it is visited. Before continuing, don't forget to leave your like and subscribe. We also invite you to activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Number 4. William Jeffries in 1844, a young man named William Jeffries was elected a senator from the state of North Carolina. He had a promising political future, as he was intelligent and had all the necessary qualities to make a name for himself in the nation. However, he fell ill with intense fevers of unknown origin, which gradually worsened. His last few weeks were of high fever and hallucinations, during which he developed a deep fear of being buried and eaten by worms. He believed that being underground he would be prey to all the insects that lived there. Due to this, and seeing that his death was imminent, his last wish was that his body be buried in a solid rock. At first, people did not take this request very seriously, as William was young and might yet recover. 
However, as his condition worsened, they began to assume that he would not survive his illness. Finally, it was his father who began to prepare a stone tomb for his son. The construction of the tomb was complicated and faced many problems. The rock was fractured several times and the tombstone that covered it was also broken. Today, the grave of William Jeffries can be visited, and it is completely unlike any other known. It is fractured in several places but still retains its original shape from when it was built at that time. Number 3. City of the Dead In Russia, there is a town that can be considered a great grave in itself. It is called the City of the Dead and is located in the Caucasus Mountains. Its real name is Dargovs, and it has thousands of graves as its only inhabitants. It is believed that during one of the great pandemics of the 13th century, many people flocked to this town to await death. There are also other theories about this disturbing population in the mountains. Some maintain that it was a settlement built by Sarmatian nomads. In addition, it is thought that it could be a cemetery erected during the Mongol invasion, where the City of the Dead was erected as a large crypt in honor of the deceased. Regardless of its origin, the City of the Dead can be visited by any traveler who wishes. However, the journey is not easy, since there are no buses or trains that take you to this remote place on the roller coasters. However, there are ways to get there if you really want to have a different experience in a city turned into a tomb. Of course, there are many haunting stories about ghosts and spirits that supposedly inhabit Dargovs. Number 2. Georges Rodenbach the Per Lachaise Cemetery in Paris is world-renowned for its beautiful mausoleums and tombstones, but few are as striking as that of Georges Rodenbach, a prominent 19th-century Belgian writer. In this place rests his body, but his grave goes beyond the conventional. From his imposing tomb, a bronze statue of Rodenbach can be seen emerging from his grave, holding a single rose in his hand. This sculpture, of great visual impact, encapsulates the essence of the work and the personality of the writer. Rodenbach's grave is dramatic and romantic, reflecting the recurring style and theme of his writing. His best-known work, a symbolic novel titled Bruges La Morte, tells the harrowing story of a widower residing in the city of Bruges, struggling to cope with the grief after the death of his beloved wife. The choice of a single rose in the hand of the statue symbolizes the deep and eternal love that endures even beyond death. This evocative and poetic image on Rodenbach's grave invites visitors to reflect on the universal themes he explored in his literary works, such as love, mourning, and the transcendence of the human spirit. Number 1. The Girl in the Shadow Box the story of this peculiar tombstone begins with Hermann Lutis, a man who was hopelessly captivated by a sculpture's muse while in Europe. This muse was an Italian model of extraordinary beauty. Hermann fell head over heels in love with her, and in an act of undying love, commissioned a memorial statue of her in her honor. Although Hermann proposed to her, the Italian model rejected her offer. However, this did not lessen Hermann's love and admiration for her. He decided to send the statue to St. Louis and kept it in his home as a symbol of his everlasting love. Over time, Herman decided that the statue deserved a special and meaningful place. So, he decided to mark the family plot in Bellefountain Cemetery as the new home for his beloved sculpture. But he was not satisfied with just placing it on the ground. To protect it from the elements and preserve its beauty, Herman added a glass box that would enclose it. In 1921, at the age of 50, Hermann Ludis passed away and was buried at the foot of the statue, fulfilling his wish to be close to his beloved even in eternity. Since then, the tombstone has become a point of interest for visitors to Bellefountain Cemetery, who are fascinated by the love story it depicts and the statue's unique and enigmatic beauty. Thanks for joining us on this exciting tour of the 10 strangest graves in the world. We hope you have enjoyed the intriguing and mysterious stories behind these tombs. Don't forget to subscribe for more fascinating content in the future. Until next time.